Mystic Falls seems to have a tumultuous relationship with logic. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Vampire Diaries plot holes you never noticed. For this list, we're looking at the Vampire Diaries' most baffling inconsistencies and plot holes from the show's eight seasons. <laughs> Number 10. Damon's Pilot Powers in the pilot episode, Damon opts for a rather theatrical approach when greeting Elena and tormenting Stefan. Okay. Hi, bird. Ah! It's not creepy or anything. One of the things this seems to establish about the older Salvatore brother is his ability to control crows and fog, but these powers never show up again. Perhaps they were considered a touch too goofy, especially since Damon was presented as an intimidating villain in season one's early days. In the books, Damon can shapeshift into a crow and, to some degree, manipulate the weather, which explains why the TV show briefly references these skills. I'm sorry. It's a fog. It's making me foggy. And then back there, there was this, this, this bird, and it was all very Hitchcock for a second. That, that is the bird movie, right? The Number nine. Silas predating the originals. When the Michelson family is first introduced, a lot of fuss is made over the fact that they are the first immortals. Later on, the originals' claim to fame is retroactively lessened when an even older immortal, Silas, is introduced. They all knew about Silas, that he needed to stay buried. I actually hold witches in high esteem. Yeah, but why Silas? Why are you so afraid of him? They said if Silas rises, he'll unleash hell on Earth. I happen to like Earth just the way it is. Silas's legacy is not treated as breaking news by the vampires, although the same cannot be said for the audience. So, it's a cure for immortality? Human blood is the life force of an immortal. Now, in all fairness, this plot hole was somewhat fixed by the originals being rebranded as the first immortal vampires, while Silas, despite sharing many similarities with vampires, is simply described as an immortal. Please, Liz. I came first. Vampires are nothing more than a disgusting perversion of me. I'm unkillable, I'm immortal, and I'm psychic, and to function, I need human blood. But don't ever call me a vampire. Number 8. Vervain is inconsistently available. The Vampire Diaries replaces garlic with the herb vervain as a substance that not only weakens vampires, but protects humans from their influence. And right now, you want to kiss me? What the hell? In Mystic Falls, the availability of vervain tends to vary depending on the needs of the plot. On occasion, finding the substance requires hitting an herb dealer. Other times, vervain literally flows through the town like water. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's something that I've, I've had forever, and uh, I've never wanted to give it to anyone until now. I'd very much like it if you wear it for me, for good luck. Is that rose that I smell? No, it's, uh, it's an herb. In general, it was more scarce during the show's earlier seasons, when used in more basic ways, but later episodes explored new ways to consume the herb, which required a more readily available stash. Number 7. Where's Jenna? Not on the other side. I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. The other side is purgatory for vampires, witches, and all sorts of supernatural creatures. Well, all of them except Jenna. Elena's aunt was turned into a vampire and killed shortly after, but Jenna never once appears on the other side, even when Elena herself is stuck in the dimension. True, Jenna's death was unique among vampires, as she was turned and killed within the same day and didn't harm a human. She's not dead. She's in transition. In the 20th episode of season 3, Esther explains that Jenna was at peace and managed to avoid the other side, but it feels like a bit of a patch. You may draw comfort knowing that your aunt is not in the place that I was. She doesn't know the torment of the other side. Though made a vampire, she remained pure. And she knows peace. Number 6. Older vampires are supposed to be stronger. Seniority is a big deal among vampires, with physical strength being directly proportional to the undead creature's age. However, this only holds true in a vacuum, as apparently a substantial enough emotional kick can level the playing field. Ah! 
The fact that anger is enough to shrink the power gap between newborns like Caroline and Elena and centuries-old vampires like Damon and Catherine renders this whole strength equals age rule moot. Goodbye, Catherine. <laughs> Stefan! Thanks for the save, handsome. Get the hell out of here before I kill you myself. There should be a limit to the power of emotions, otherwise fights are decided by who wants to survive the most. I'm older than you and stronger. Don't get on my bad side. Number 5. Bonnie failing to notice Catherine didn't die The anchor is essentially an entity that serves as the gateway to the other side, so that the ghosts of supernatural creatures can pass through. In Season 5, Bonnie is forced to be the new anchor, so the witch actively fills the death of every ghost entering the other side. When Catherine dies later in the season, Bonnie has no excuse for not knowing that the doppelganger did not pass through to the other side. <sighs> I guess this is how our love story ends. Bonnie would have felt Catherine dying, an experience that the witch had endured enough times to know what to expect. I wanted a spa day. You try feeling the death of every supernatural creature who passes through you on their way to the other side. Even though Catherine had been turned into a human, she was still a doppelganger. No, 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 no! Number 4. Logan and the Invitation Rule Hello, Jenna. Logan. Aren't you going to invite me in? One traditional weakness of vampires is that they have to be invited into a home, although killing the owner of the residence is one way to nullify this protection. I knew you'd show up here, and I'm glad you did, because I have some questions. Probably the most baffling instance of the invitation rule on Vampire Diaries has to do with Logan, who, after being turned into a vampire, cannot enter his own home. The invitation rule does seem to be a bit of a stickler for documentation, so a possible explanation is that Logan's name is not on the property's deed. One minute, I'm a small town, on the rise news guy, and next thing I know, I can't get into my house because my foot won't go through the door. You have to be invited in. I know. I live alone. Oh, that sucks. Still, talk about adding insult to injury. What about walking in the sun? I'm a morning person. Number 3. Stefan not saving both Elena and Matt For a normal human, saving one person trapped in a sinking car is an impressive feat, but a vampire with super strength should do better. In a case of history repeating itself, Stefan twice has to decide whether to save Elena or somebody else with the vampire never once even considering option three and saving both parties. Matt, look out! <laughs> Stefan has proven to be a pretty powerful vampire, who could toss humans around like ragdolls after just being turned. So this did not have to be a Sophie's Choice type moment. My body is exploding with power, Damon. I can hear things from far away. I can see through the darkness. I can move like it's magic. And the guilt, the pain. Number 2. Bonnie's Magic Bonnie is arguably the most important character in the Vampire Diaries, with the witch proving invaluable whenever a plot thread needs a bit of magic to move along. You tell me, you're the psychic one. Right, I forgot. Especially in the later seasons, Bonnie's powers become nearly godlike, so much so that she manages to face off against the literal devil and later on uses magic to eradicate hell. It's Matos and Cydia over it. It's Matos and Cydia over it. Considering that Bonnie spends a decent chunk of the middle seasons without any powers, the character's sudden mastery of magic comes as a rather shocking surprise. More than anything, Bonnie is frequently reduced to a character who exists solely to help everyone else. <laughs> I broke the spell. How? It took some time, but I think I finally figured this witch thing out. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Cure's Inconsistent Rules The Cure is the holy grail of the Vampire Diaries, a unique item that reverses immortality. Once ingested, the recipient begins to age normally, 
but the cure can be lost if all the owner's blood is drained, which will cause them to age rapidly. But if I'm nothing but a gag reflex to you, why not cut me loose and then we can call it a day? Because the cure still exists, and I still want it. It's just running through your veins right now. Your blood is the cure, Catherine. Does that clear things up for you? Essentially, only one immortal at a time can be cured. Funnily enough, this changed once Elena and Stefan were the ones exchanging blood. Suddenly, a needle's worth was enough to transfer the cure. What's this great weapon that could bring about the end of the vampire species? A cure. He said there was a cure. Silas may just have been lying about needing to fully drain the owner's blood, but that doesn't explain how in season eight, Bonnie knew that a single shot would be enough. You know what, you can shove your cure. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.